Hello and welcome to the fourth of our SEMA F3 Financial Strategy Lecture Recaps. OK, last time we looked at investment appraisal, we're going to move on to do some more investment appraisal. This is quite a big mind map, so I'm going to split it into two sessions on the videos here. So we stop halfway through and then I'll continue it on a second video. So firstly then, net present value pros and cons. We looked at the net present value calculations last time. So what are the pros and cons of using it? Well, first of all, the pros. It considers the time value of money, which is why we use our discount tables. It gives us an absolute figure as opposed to a percentage figure. It considers the whole life of the project. Remember, payback, for example, only considers up to the time you get your investment back. But this considers the whole life of the project. And it's based on cash flows as opposed to accounting profits which we know are able to be manipulated. So NPV is focused on increasing shareholder wealth. The relationship between them, well, the value of your net present value will be the increase in shareholder wealth. So a positive net present value will equal share price growth. This is because your value of your company should be based on the present value of all future cash flows. So if your NPV is zero, this will increase your future cash flows and therefore should increase the current value of the company. So the disadvantages of using this? Well, firstly, calculating the cost of capital can be difficult, which we'll come to later in the course. And it also depends on forecasts, i.e. forecasts of the cash flows and expenses. So this brings us on to the internal rate of return. The internal rate of return is the discount rate or the cost of capital where the net present value calculation will equal zero. We calculate it using this formula. We discount at a low discount rate, for example, 5%, and a high discount rate, for example, 15%. Hopefully your high discount rate will give you a negative net present value. Your low discount rate will give you a positive. We then get these two present values and we feed them into the formula and that will find the place in between those two discount rates where the net present value equals zero. So the process again then is to fill the relevant cash flows into your net present value pro forma, same as for an ordinary net present value calculation. We then discount at both a low discount rate and then a high discount rate and get the net present value at both and we then fill them into our formula which will get our internal rate of return. And we did an example of that in class, it's in your notes. Advantages then of internal rate of return, well it's an understandable percentage. It uses cash flows as opposed to accounting profits. It covers the whole life of the project and it increases your shareholder wealth. Disadvantages though, well it's complicated calculation, takes a bit of time to do. It's a percentage, not an absolute figure like NPV. Also based on estimates again, you may get multiple internal rate of returns over the course of a project depending on when you do the calculation. And it assumes that the returns are reinvested in the project when in fact they may be reinvested in other areas of the business. The modified internal rate of return seeks to address some of these. The assumptions of it are that all inflows occur at the end of the project and what that means is that the assumption is that returns are reinvested at the firm's cost of capital as opposed to into the project again. How do we do it? Well, we inflate the inflows, i.e. all the cash inflows, at the firm's cost of capital and this gives us our terminal value, i.e. the future value of all of our inflows if we were to get them all at the end of the project. We then calculate our modified internal rate of return because it is where our terminal value, i.e. the value of all our future inflows at the end, equals the present value of our investment now. This becomes more clear when you do an example and we did one of those in class. So inflation then related to discounted cash flow, just a few exam tips. Remember the formula. 1 plus M, which is our money or nominal rate, equals 1 plus R times 1 plus inflation. 1 plus our real rate 
times 1 plus our inflation rate. So how do we choose a discount rate under these conditions if we're given several or all of these in the exam? Well if the cash flows in the question are inflated, use the money rate. If the cash flows are not inflated, use the real rate. Couple more tips. Use the money rate in the exam if lots of inflation rates are given in the question or if there's tax in the question. So use the money rate if lots of inflation rates are given and if tax is in the question. Remember that interest is tax deductible. So for example if it's bank interest and the bank rate is 10% and the tax rate is 30% the actual interest paid will be 7% because the interest is tax deductible. So I'm going to leave it there and we'll continue this mind map on our next session.